Take it away. So, pistol run now for Mirage. Let's take a look at this. FM on their T side. CT side, still not bought yet. Who's going to be the kit bearer? And who's going to play Who's going to play mid as well? So last time, things got a bit muddled up. You had Robin playing towards mid instead of Sliggy. And actually, it's going to be T-Sec there with the smoke and diffuse kit. But still, we're going to be seeing potentially a palace burst here. Web of the Deagle, as soon as he fires his Deagle shot, he's going to be a distraction. All eyes on him. And the players from Palace will burst and swarm the site. Let's try and find the way out there, but Weber actually gets a frag as well. That's huge. Takes down Batham so disgustingly as he lands that shot. T-Sack hiding in the back line. Comes in huge though too. Amazing openness to kick this one off. Trying to keep the pain train rolling, but unfortunately couldn't quite do it. Robin through the smoke. Someone take away this man's night vision goggle snods as he shuts them down. Already a one-man lead for the side of Fish123. T-Sack with such a clutch play, but still. Weber and Fry1, and we've seen what Weber's already done into this round with the Deagle. He still has it, but no armor. Means that moving around the site after plant is going to be so difficult. Still, the kit is down, but the kit's down on site. They can retrieve this. Even if the bomb goes down, they're going to have to hold off so long and already. Keith has found one. Weber in the one versus three. This is a horrible situation to be in. It looked so fantastic for them, but it's really started to slip away. It was all off the back of that T stack play. Now, Weber, going for the panic shot. Trying to bait them out, is aware of Keita's position, but just can't quite connect onto him. Has to try and go for a bit of a desperation play. Needs to do something, but these positions, just holding firm from Fish123, they have no reason to peek here. If they just play their own style of CS, just hold their angles, they can win this one, and you can see that pressure getting to Weber. No overfacing from the CT side. They know the situation Weber's in, right? If he gets his kill towards CT, he can plant freely. You see, he goes for the plant. Keita will take him down nicely. Imagine if Keita overfaced it unnecessarily, right? Weber can get the bomb down. And then the round's on him. He can play around the triple boxes. He can watch his shot. Oh, it's not going to show the shot, but still. T-Sack's play towards Ninja. They don't anticipate it. You saw where the players were playing as well on the yeah. CT side. Stairs or connector. And CT, they're showing as if it's a retake on the A-bomb site. That's why none of the FM side anticipated T-Sack where he was. But still, the force buy comes in. Five full Kevlar buys, which means we're going to be seeing no AWP into the next buy round. Very important, especially on a map like Mirage. But still, one flashbang still on Weber. This could be a fast connector per, uh, play. Instead, the flashbang and Weber himself will fall. Yeah, they're going to go for that boost. It doesn't really work out too fantastically. Keats as well trying to hold them back. It's going to be Keita as he starts to slide back onto the bomb site. Nice use of nades. The utility will roll in. Those fry out the server very quickly. And it just falls on a, a trio of FM players. Bit of an awkward spot to be in. T-Sack trying to hold this angle. Wants to see if Stanley is trying to try and go on the aggressive. Get spots out. And then he's forced to fall back now. A bit of a low on the battlefield tonight as they make their approach toward the A bomb site. Still, though, he can be the thorn in the side, but do they anticipate Batham to already be towards CT? Finds one. Two versus five now. And right now, if the bomb doesn't go down, it's going to be such a poor round here for FM. But it shall be planted. Pulse trying to work his magic by these triple boxes. Finds one. Does actually land the second headshot as well. Suddenly, a one versus three. Maybe catch the third, but he won't. He shall fall. Three players stay alive, three SMGs. Generally, when you're the T side, or sorry, the side that loses the pistol, and you go for an eco, you're expecting two kills. Two kills, you're happy, right? Not if you force by. FM, they put everything into that round, and as soon as it comes back, you can see here, you're going to get 2.4k for the next loss bonus, which means no player here on the T side will have an AWP leading into the next buy round, unless someone goes with no Kevlar. Mirage, you're going to have to be playing quite an aggressive style AWP. You want the Kevlar, you want to be fighting towards Connector, playing towards Short, taking all those aggressive peaks. Going no armor on a map like this is very, very risky. Still though, full eco right now. For Fish123, they want to have four or more players stay alive to build up their bank and build up their economy. So it's going to be that push as well towards the A-bomb site. T-Sack had the angle covered. Easy spray down for him, build top of it up. Want to try and get the third frag, but unfortunately Pulse was a little bit too fast. As he took him down, proving a bit of a nuisance, but Nilzinho utilizing that P250 will strike down. Robin falls them into a two versus three now. The bomb in a little bit of an awkward spot, and they're just holding. I'm going to see if Fish123 will make the same mistake and go for another peek. They will indeed. Flash comes in, and already they're trying to push towards triple. Actually, no, they get cold feet there and push back. They understand the situation. There's no need with the amount of advantage to get reckless. Instead, just, uh, just you know, jump spotting, playing for formation. They're trying to see if they're still at the bomb site. Obviously, these T players could potentially run all the way back towards T spawn. That's why you saw Bath in there, jump spotting towards the bin over CT. Playing for information, but still no over aggression shown here. They don't want to give away any more. They already have already two guns lost. If any more do fall, then the money is you know it's going to take far longer for their money to actually build. Yeah, and I mean, look at the time they have left to play with as well. You can see they can still go for this full rotate off towards the bomb site. That's what Nilzinho is going to be attempting to pull off here. Grabbed himself an M4 on the way. This isn't looking too bad at all. Webber's doing a great job of just planting that seed of doubt snods. He's keeping all three members exactly. on the A site. 
And now the bomb slowly shifting in towards Biaps. Neil Zinio, is he going to anticipate actually no one here from the FM side? Starting to realize this FM. Sorry, Weber actually still trying to sell that fake. Gets the headshots one to bait them, and already Neil Zinio gets the bomb down. We're in a one versus two. There is kits. They're both coming from short. Smart play. They can double up and play the trade game. Yeah, you can see as well, Nilzinho, he wanted to try and make this into a one versus one, taking the fight for Liggy at Sliggy. He actually gets tagged down to 15 HP straight away. That is a great little tag out from Sliggy. Peeking together as well, working as that duo. It's going to be so hard for Nilzinho here. Keita will take him down with a Tech 9. Nice play from FM. Webber did a great job of keeping him towards A, but it didn't really work out towards the end there, unfortunately. I mentioned before, no AWP into the first Byron, but we've seen two plants, and this will grant the FM side an AWP if they do wish it. Instead, actually, we're going to be seeing five rifles. This could be a fast mid play. Smoke short, smoke window, smoke off either connector or short. Oh, sorry, smoke top mid and window. And from there, make a play. Have one of these players, one of these star rifles go towards Delpan. The other one push towards connector, flash him in. Try and make the pick happen. Robin shooting his AWP, letting them know that it's right there. And he's going to move away, play towards connector. Shoots the AWP through the smoke and now going to play passive towards connector. Smoke top mid, flash comes through. And now they can start to take mid with the rifles. The fact they don't have an AWP as well means that they need to use their utility well. They can't allow Robin to get a free kill here on flash. They have to flash the angles, push together. And already Fry 1 will find the first, but Bathan trades it. Yeah, nice little trade early into the round. We can see Robin as well. He has that AWP. He's in close range proximity up towards Pulse. Should get a fairly effective tag off. We'll track the Monotov as well, just trying to ward them back. They've heard all that audio. They know what's going on. Mid control. Looking fairly good so far for FM Weber as well. Still just playing that look towards that B bomb site, trying to force them to stay there. Waste a lot of their manpower. Yeah, Weber making noise there, trying to get them to use not just their manpower, but their utility. He wants those smokes to be gone, he wants those flashes to be used once the push comes in, and already Robbins finds the first, Stanley does fall. Two, sorry, one man lead for Fish. Flash is still running in a molly as well, doesn't actually go through, but Robin... Oh, gets the w oh my god, the collapse finds both those kills. Robin, the timing, so unfortunate for Nilzinho. The pulse there as he takes him down the leg as well, towards Weber, he's so low, just 15 HP. Sliggy will be the one to shut him down, but you can see Robin saw the first man cross, held the angle, waits for him to peek, and just like that, sets them up and just bowls them down. Snods, that Mental. is just so unfortunate for FM. Flashes, fair play, right? You do not anticipate Robin to be where he was. Yeah. Thing is, though, for Robin, all he sees is a smoke window, smoke top mid, and a smoke towards the top of connector. He knows they can be up short. That's why you saw the rifle play towards Connector, playing close. And you saw Robin go towards b and take the long-range duels. You saw how, how he set himself up and how the team changed their structure as well, their CT setup. Fry1 finds the first onto T-Sac, playing aggressive, trying to get information. Still, though, smoke off towards window. Now Pulse can get towards Connector. Thing is, with the Tech 9 versus the AWP of Robin, the tag as well, that is just damaging. Nilzino to 17 HP off the back of that. Anyway, Keita towards short with Molly off Delpan. Trying to hold off mid as much as he can. He can actually spot the top of connector, but that smoke you can see. Again, the smoke comes, he anticipates them to go towards short. And Robin does get the kill and the player trying to be boosted and they're going to burst through connector. They need to overpower him here. This is the thing. They have to use the advantage in terms of the battle of attrition to just mow him down. Switches out for that secondary pistol. We'll get the one headshot off on towards Weber. Fry will take one down. Pulse as well. But unfortunately, Pulse gets traded out and it just falls down towards Fry now. One versus two situation. Sliggy and Keita, the last two boys in blue left standing. Rest one through the smoke. That's the headshot off on towards Keita. He can retrieve the bomb here and it just falls on towards Sliggy. He's on short. Goes for the big one. It doesn't matter. Fry will find it. And he's finally going to be able to get a board on the round for FM. You saw how they swarm Robin, right? As soon as Robin shows up towards Connector. They made the play. They lined up close to the smoke. The flash comes in. They burst through it. Robin finds one. Robin finds two. But eventually, as soon as Robin falls, it feels like the CT defense does as well. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, though, off the back of that. They played it smart. That's all you have to do. Just overpower him in that situation. He's the AWPer. He's not in a great angle. You run him down. Robin couldn't react. I mean, he did a fantastic job on his own, just off individual strength of actually getting that initial pick. But they played it smart. And Fry, that was just individual performance towards the end, but really went big. Smoke towards stairs and jungle. Robin going to rotate away and actually we're going to be having T-Sack playing towards stairs, holding connector. Already pushing towards ramp of those T's. Stanley will be traded out. One player does four on both sides. We're in a four versus four. 
Look at this as well, Bayfam. He's so keen to this. He peeks out. Unfortunately, Pulse was a little bit too fast. Robin, he's low, but it's not going to matter when you've got an AWP in this position. Holding off the smoke will go out there, just zoning him out. This is smart stuff from the side of Fish, but Sliggy, uh, from the side of FM even, but Sliggy wants to try and take it back into the hands of Fish123. Lands that first AWP shot. Robin as well, the confidence on display. Got the information, went back for a second bite and takes down Weber. Such a risky play there. 4 HP. Thing is, if he dies there, he can lose the round instantly. Yeah. That's the thing, right? He dies, you can flash a player into CT, Plan for, plan for CT if you're the T side and, you know, the round could be over just like that. Robin making the risky play. High risk, high reward, and it definitely pays off as these Ts are forced to try and retake mid. Problem is, though, once they have mid, what can they really do with it? You've got Sliggy towards short with the AWP. He knows there's no one connector. He knows there's no one short right now. He has all the information. As soon as he fires the AWP, he can fall back towards the pillar. Pulse really needs to find this. Sliggy, oh my He's god! Double scoped! Double scoped. And now the bomb could go down. They've got an AWP as well. The AWP can go towards apartments, hold off the kitchen, rotate, but already they're going for the fast retake. Such an awkward way to get taken down there as well. You give a pul you give Pulse the AWP. He's unreal with this weapon in certain situations. He really is a master flick when he comes to finding people. And it's up against Robin now. A one versus two. Four HP and a dream as he wants to try and find his way in towards this bomb site. Focusing over, trying to find out Nilzinho close by short. If he peeks, he will surely take him down, but they have no reason to. They can just hold their angles, bide their time, and surely be able to win this one. Robin will try and take the fight, creeping ever so slowly, but Pulse peeks out, smacks him down, and that is just disgusting. So unfortunate there. I mean, what went on with communication. They knew what angles those CTs were watching. Sliggy with the double zoom as well. So much time on the clock there, right? You have to be anticipating the fact that they can grab the bomb and run all the way back towards B. He was double scoped there. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have to do that. Even if he's single scoped, they've got a man advantage. Yeah. It's fine. If you whiff, you just need the information. That's all you need. Still, their fast flashes rain into the B bombs like they're going fast. Yeah, this is going to be that all-out aggression. Just trample Bard their way in, explode out onto the site. Sliggy with a measly pistol in hand, but Keita knows how to use his. He will eventually get traded out, though, as Stanley takes him down. Sliggy comes in with one of his own, will shut down Fry, but Pulse will be absolutely ripping his way through Stanley as well. Another frag off on towards Robin. It's a two versus three here as Bayfam and T-Sac make their approach. They have one flashbang to work with if they want to try and slip their way in towards the bomb site. t -Sack just walks straight into the crosshairs, just trying to get out towards L Block, wanted to do something on his own. Bayfam still has that flash. They didn't work together in any sort of way. Oh, Bayfam wow. will eventually find that frag, but that just looks sloppy. Sloppy indeed. Then again, right? Job's done. You've taken three guns out of the T's hands. You, what? They only had, what, P250s, mm -hmm. a flashbang on T-Sac. No armor bought up there, so you've taken... $10,000 worth of investment out of the T's economy. Fair play. That's actually a fairly good eco. Even though that two versus three was played poorly with the flashbang, yeah. could have been better, could have been more. Then again, you still got to be feeling pretty comfortable. Passive default coming out here. You have, I believe that is Stanley. Yep, playing close mid. Flash comes in for him. Pulse as well, the AWP towards mid. How will he decide to play? So this is the thing what I like to see as well. When you actually see Pulse, who's obviously the secondary AWP of that side, get the weapon in hand, he is so ridiculously great with us. Exactly. He has that very aggressive play style. The only thing is, you see this sort of in a, a lot of AWPers, sort of like Pulse, like Luzza, when they get that initial frag, they keep the momentum going. They don't know when to cut it down and hold back. Yes, exactly. Get the first kill and you just want to keep going. You just want to keep, you just want to, you want the round to be yours. Understanding when to fall back and when to just play back and play the man advantage. This could be really nice as well. They go for that boost. They're going to try and use it. The, the timing! Like, so unfortunate as he gets picked off. Sliggy as well going to hit the deck. He got caught with his pants down, fumbling around with grenades, and it just will come back to bite him in the bottom as Stanley as well slips his way out into Shop Robin will eventually take him down. Well, it looks like they might just have to back off and go for the save here as they got overwhelmed so quickly there. You just have to save. You can see already, right? There's two smokes still on the T side. Neil Zunu just thrown his. That's another 15 seconds off of the bomb timer. So Weber going to throw his later on. Another uh, 15 seconds. If Fish123 go for that retake, they're going to have to flash through smokes. And, you know, four players on that B bomb site. There's so many crossfires they can play. From default, from bench, car bench, all of these different crossfires. It's nearly an impossible round to win unless miracles happens or a player steps up. Going to take the safe route. Two players staying alive. Observer, can we take a look at the money, please, if possible? So, actually... They can drop over UMPs, but then again, they've lost three in a row. They're going to get 3.4k next round. Just full save this. You're going to get two orps as well if you want. If you want Sliggy orping towards B-Shore and Robin orping towards mid, you can. And yeah, going to be the eco coming out here. They could have both rifles stacked towards a bomb site and just risk it 50-50. But instead, we're going to be seeing one of the rifles go towards A. That'll be T-Sac. And obviously, Batham with the other M4 going towards 
sure. Still, so, uh, with this, the sorry, it's not. Let me to. I've I've come in. I've walked in. All right, you were getting changed. I've swung the door open. It's all gone wrong. Wow. Sorry, mate. But uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, just slow pile play. I mean, this is smart as well from FM. They're not gonna go for that over aggressive style. They know fish are low on money. They know they're probably gonna try and throw a spanner in the works. Go exactly. for a little bit more aggressive. Exactly. So you just play that slow style CS. You have the advantage here. You've got the range of advantage to work with. They have no reason to play aggressive. It's not just that, but once the clock slowly goes down and down. That's when Fish123 are going to question themselves. They're going to be like, they're not coming to my site. They're not mm. going to come to my site. Let's just stack B. Let's just stack B. They're going to make a mistake later on. And already Robin makes one as the first frag is in favor of FM. Neil Zinio does find that one. Still, there are two M4s, a kit as well, and a flashbang boosted towards short. May catch Neil Zinio here. Smoke towards window. And the bomb is going towards B. Neil Zinio trying to sell a fake here towards connector on A. Still, they're boosted up on short. And elevated angle, what can he actually find? Does spot out Weber. What a snip of him. We'll try and take him down, but unfortunately the rain is not really helping him out. Stanley just tears his way through him. It's all on t sack Miles out of the way towards the A-bomb site. Found that first frag off on towards right. He's actually getting hunted as well. They want to try and punish him. Nilzinho is hot on his tail. Has spotted him out, sprinting off towards T-spawn. And they find this frag. They really want to just try and punish the CTs here, but t sack does fire back. Lands the headshot off on towards Nilzinho. Waiting for Pulse's arrival as well. Open arms, scoped in, just trying to find it. That's the fullback now into Palace, just trying to stay alive in this situation. Right now, FM swarming this gun. They understand that for their economy, it means nothing if they lose this, these investments here, these AKs. For Fish123, when the money is so low, $3,000 is so vital. Weber coming behind. Will he time T-Sack here? Sneaking up behind, just tiptoeing, but it's not going to matter. There's Stanley with the front-facing aggression to pick him off. So, three players staying alive there. Not the end of the world could have been cleaner, but then again, you are pushing. You can see, I mentioned before, right? What do you gain versus what do you lose? Mm. For Fish123, you lose $3,000 when you've only, you've got zero, you've got 100 yeah. there, right? For FM, you lose $3,000, it's fine. Pulse has got 10K, 8K on Stanley, it's fine. The money is in such a better position right now for the FM side. Four rounds, one in a row. For Fish123, they need to take this one. Going to be the slow play again from FM side. They understand that all the pressure's on Fish123 to make the play. Yeah, and that's the difference here as well, as you were talking about previously. How powerful that double-up setup can be with Fish, as we see Sliggy now getting the second drew up back out. Is this going to be, you know, the game changer? Will this affect the pace of FM? It depends, right? If FM play, if FM play slow, they play for picks themselves for Pulse, then yeah, Pulse is definitely going to, you know, not definitely, but there's a high chance Pulse gets caught off guard by the second AWP. That's one thing, right? You have the AWP versus AWP duel, but what happens when there's a second one in the mix and already smoke towards top of connector? Last time they signaled a B split. Will FM go for the same play again? Oh, Stanley, cheeky little shot. Bit of a struggle, but he will overcome Ke uh, Keita in that firefight as they now want to try and make their way towards the A-bomb, says it seems. The smoke going up. They will once again go for this boost play. Are they going to be able to overwhelm t -Sack? Has the angle covered? Just locked and loaded. Doesn't really need to do anything in that scenario. Just simple pull the trigger, gun them down as he tears one to shreds. Gets the follow-up frag off as well towards Nilzinho. t -Sack doing work right now. Backs off so we can stay alive. They just want to keep that manpower. Try and keep the numbers in this battle of attrition as he works his way over towards CT. Weber will try to get that bomb planted. t -Sack, can he overpower Pulse? Unfortunately not. We'll take him now with a quick little flick. Goes back. A oh, second, lands the tag, but not quite the frag. Robin will take him down as well. Falls into a three versus two now as the aggression starts to go on display. Slicky, he's hot on his towel. He's trying to get over there, but time is ticking away as he makes his approach to the site. They have a smoke. Robin can smoke off towards the bomb. They have no kit, though. Jumping, Robin will fall. Weber finds that kill. Slicky now in the one versus two. Weber's low HP, might even wallbang him here. Not quite lucky enough. They know where Fry is. Does get the kill onto Weber, but with no kit. Fry one faces and takes him down. If they had the kit there and the smoke, you can smoke the bomb, try and stick yeah. out the fuse if you kill Weber under balcony. The problem is, when you have no kit, the play you should make instead is instead of smoking the bomb, you smoke off choke points. So, ideally, could have smoked towards ramp. The problem is, he jump spotted and got caught off in midair. Weber did find him. So, once again, Fish123 and quite an awkward buy here. Going for this quasi buy, they will be able to buy up into the next one after losing five in a row, but already, again, another fast B play. Sprint their way through. Sliggy, close range combat with that Deagle. Unfortunately, won't even get a chance to fire a single bullet out of it. As his entire team, all of his brothers in arms, just getting dispatched within seconds. Robin, the only one with a real weapon into this round as he has that UMP. Will find the first frag off on towards Stanley. Takes him down with that armor penetrating UMP. But realizes he should probably just back off for a minute, try and find another frag. Spots out Weber actually as he was just sneaking his way through CPL and can take him down. T Sack, be working his way back through T spawn as well. It's a little bit awkward into this. Robin, can actually get another frag here. He works his way through. Fry has the angle covered. 
They're doing a good job of actually doing damage to the economy of FM, but this is still such the a very awkward too round. High. Yeah. The money's just too high right now. Yeah, you can take two guns out of their hands, but what's 7,000 to a 50k bank? Not a lot. Fry one. We'll take down Robin. And we're looking at a three-round lead early on on the FM side. As we do go to 7-4. T-Sack trying to get exit frags with his 5-7. Sorry, CZ. Won't find much, though. The round ticks over. Three rounds separating these two teams here. 6k on multiple players on the CT side. They can go for double up setup again. Actually, Robin got a rifle now. I like this play. He's just been smoked off. What impact is Robin having? Zero. The only time his orbs actually came to play was when he rotated towards B and they hit B. Apart from that, he's in these awkward situations, right? In the middle portion of the round and towards the end of the round, or if the bomb's down, you want a rifle, not an orb. It's so hard to retake these bomb sites with an orb and already t sack Let's go down. A bit of awkward confrontation there, but Bacon was the last man left standing off the all out warfare kicked off. Does eventually get taken down. There's three T's left on the A bomb site. They've been able to slip in, zone out the CTs very quickly with these smokes as well. And then get that bomb planted now. Fry will be the one to do so. Three frags on the board already for him in the round. Can he find two more? He's going to be using that utility, just zoning out these CTs, buying themselves as much time as they can to play with, getting into fantastic after plants. Flash comes to CT. Slig is blind. They do have a kit this time. Smoke on Keita as well. Smoke towards CT. Can he catch one of these players of guard? And unfortunately for him, Fry 1 will catch him. Slip in. Flash comes in. Going to pick up the AWP and just leg it. He's off. Trying to save. And you spoke about good after plants, right? And there's a point I really want to make. Actually, is he even going to save this AWP? Ooh, he is on the hunt trying to take him down. He's getting overwhelmed here. So everyone just funnels their way in. Keita will actually find one. He's very proficient Ooh. with the AWP. We know he can do damage, but unfortunately, three is too many. But two was just right. Was there a point you wanted to make there real quick? The point that you were making was back us off the uh, off plants. Oh, Good no. off plants. Yeah, so one thing you shouldn't do, if you mm -hmm. know the enemy team, the CT side, has good utility, you shouldn't be playing towards firebox. You yeah. shouldn't be playing towards that corner because you have to be anticipating the molly that comes in from those players rotating B. They've gone for a quasi buy, and then they've got the full buy. They're going to have mollies. So uh, just a little point to touch on if you're at home. Still, though, going to be four rounds to lead now for FM. As we see another quasi buy. This time, not a fast play towards B. They see how close it was, and already Stanley finds one. Oh, t tack as well. Not towards top there. Trying to do a little bit of damage. Unfortunately, we'll get taken down by Stanley once again. This has been, uh, been already a very damaging round on the side of FM as they've just walked their way into whatever bomb sites they want and picked everyone off. It falls to Sliggy with a deagle in hand. He really shouldn't achieve too much here. If he can find a frag, it'd be nice. But Stanley will take him down. He will indeed. Five players alive now, but then again, there's only two rounds left, Jackie. Money isn't the be-all or end-all. And actually, maybe five rifles could be for the CT side. No AWP this time. And I quite like that play. They're being flashed off the angles. They're smoking off all the checkpoints. The way FM are playing, it's so hard to AWP versus them. Instead, they're going for the five rifle approach. They do have two kits on T-Sack and Sliggy. We're looking like a B contact play here. They could do... This might be their... I'm just trying to understand this strat. This could be the strat where they throw three smokes towards site. Mm -hmm. and run back A, but I'm not too sure. This could still just be, yeah, it's going to be the B contact play. There's no smokes this time. So just tiptoe their way up, want to try and find their way to the site. Obviously, Sliggy as well now with a rifle in hand rather than the AWP. He's just going to be playing close back angle, waiting to see as they push their way through. It was going to be the first man's drop winner, but unfortunately, his blindness, he couldn't react. Keeter on short as well, snapped down. It's absolutely obliterated by Weber there. A very fast reaction shot falls to Robin, away from Antisac. They are going to try and make their approach towards the bomb site. But let's save there. Decided that it's really not worth it once again. Yep, gonna have to go for the save here. Fry one trying to cut them off before they can get towards T spawn. Robin as well, hiding left side window. Might be able to save here. He's gonna have to let them. This is the annoying thing, right? You're gonna see players, but you just have to let them walk by. Or not, Ooh. or just shoot and tell everyone where you are. Yeah, he's really given the game away here, but Robin actually seems to have been able to slip through unscathed off the back of that. Now finding his way over to Delpan, he could just tuck in. Seems like he might actually be all right into this round. Yep. Bathin wins that duel as well. Still got the three rifles alive. Stanley caught off guard there, but their money is so strong. This makes no difference. Ooh. Ooh. So, Sliggy towards B, right? The yep. way he's playing on Van. He has no information. He's not jump supporting it. And the way he was, he was quite isolated. You know, one player playing towards short, that's fine. But Sliggy wasn't playing for any information towards B. Mm -hmm. It allowed Weber and Co. just to walk up apps, get close, and then suddenly flash, burst the site, jump out window, get that frag. And at that point, the round's pretty much over. Still though, they will have a decent buy on this one. Four rifles and then the SMG on Sliggy. Retake towards A. They have the utility to back this up. And they're going to go for the 
set play towards a palace and ramp burst. Just depends on the luck of the draw how this one will actually go down. Obviously, from in the past we've seen him actually be very proficient at holding back these pushes. We'll try and zone them out a little bit here. The Molotov will go in, delay them for a few seconds. Pulse has that angle covered, scopes him with the orb, just waiting for the right time. And now the smokes go down and they're able to set up shop trying to get that bomb planted. They're in good positions. You can see the CTs waiting for this rotate to come over. They have a lot of utility to play with, so they have no reason to rush into this. Robin finds the first one to fry one through the smoke, I believe, while he comes in towards Connector. Still, one man advantage. Ooh. I say that, but Pulse does run key to get a bit anxious there. Smoke on three players. So they can smoke off the choke points, but who cares about the choke points when Webbers is pushing through towards stairs on Stanley as well. t stack finds two. t stack thinks up the third, but player Batham in the one versus two. Nilzini was low. Has no kit to work with, though. Can he pick one up if he finds the kill onto Nilzini? But look how he's playing behind the boxes, jiggling around. Doesn't give him the opportunity of the opening to find that frag. Yeah. So close there towards the end. I wanted to try and achieve something, but it's not going to work out. And wow, FM, that's the difference maker. You can see as soon as they found their foot and they start to get the momentum behind them, just 11 rounds on the trot, no signs of slowing down. Fish just got destroyed towards the end there. They did indeed. We are going to the halftime. 11 4 is the scoreline on the T side of FM. I mean, if you're Fish 1 2 3, right? What we saw last week versus. Was it Imperial? Or was it? Yeah, it was versus Imperial, okay? Last week, Premiership. Fish 1 2 3. Exact same scenario. Boaster, pl Boaster played absolutely incredible and actually made it 11-4, uh, right? He had yeah. he won like three clutches or something crazy. It was 11-4 in favor of Imperial on their T side. Exactly the same here for FM. Problem was though, right? For Fish 1, 2, 3, as a mix, and the way that these, these players play as well, Robin, when you're thinking of Mirage CT side, Robin's going to be towards A, right? Yeah. Sleek is going to be towards mid. Keita's going to be towards B. Sure, he's so good at B, sure. When this is when they had Cinder, they had Cinder playing B apps, Keita playing towards B short, Sliggy in window, Robin A and T-Sack as well. And it all made sense. Everything yeah. fitted into place and they played so comfortably. When they bring Batham is, but Batham in, he doesn't want to play B. He doesn't like playing B. He's going to play A and that sort of messes everything up. Sh everything shuffles around. But on their T side, there isn't any setups. All these players can do exactly what they want, and right now they want a B-Rush. Yeah, they just want to play to their strengths here as they burst their way in. Bait from the man you previously spoke about gets the opening. Frag Keeter as well will find one. Sliggy takes down Pulse fairly effectively, and now Weber, kind of that last-ditch effort to try and find his way back into the bomb site. Has his dynamic duo, his brother in arms over in Fry, but can they slip back in? He's got one frag, tapping away, trying to find another one. Look at this P2000, but they have no reason to peek once again. Robin is just toying with them, and he'll open it up with a nice little USB headshot. Slaps down Weber Ooh. in the instant. Fry will respond with one of his own, though. Now starts to breach his way into the bomb site. Time is ticking away. He has to react ever so quickly. Takes down Keeter as well. What more can he achieve? Already two kills into the round. Can he find the third? Taps the bomb to force the face. Time has essentially run out at this point, though, as Sliggy just toys with him, baiting him a ring around the roses. He wants to go for the <laughs> Lands the tags, but Sliggy proved a little bit too hard. Simple B rush there with flushes. FM caught off guard there by that fast play. Maybe not anticipating something so brute force that will make the pistols go. Was it 1 1? Actually, did it. Who won the first pistol? Can we see the scoreboard, please? Uh, yeah. Fish took the first pistol. They won that first four rounds. Oh, so Fish yeah. have actually. Yeah, Fish win both the pistols, right? And in the best of one, we obviously this best of two, but mm -hmm. in this map here right now, you got to be expecting Fish 1 2 3 to have a good, solid scoreline winning both of these pistols, but instead they just sat up five rounds. It's crazy to think how well FM played on their T-side on the buy rounds, not giving any opportunities or openings for Fish 1, 2, 3, but still going to be the force buy on the side of FM. And that's actually going to be Weber. Actually, has a scout, so I thought for a minute he was going to save for the AWP, but no players saving for an AWP. We're going to be seeing a five rifle setup on the CT side first by round. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the most important factor as well when you look at that. Off the back of one of those first pistols, and then FM as well, they made that mistake on the Rico. Do you remember where their, 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 their economy was a little bit more damaged going into that? They couldn't get that first full buy out. It was a bit shaky. Yeah, I remember. As soon as they were able to actually get steady economy, they won 11 rounds on the trot. It was literally because they couldn't get that buy out, they got dominated. Exactly, but they didn't give any openings to Fish123. You saw how hard it was for an AWP mm. to try and have an impact, and a scout as well as they do get tagged up. Robin will find the kill onto Weber. That's Karma there for Weber taking down Robin, jumping, but still. Ooh. Stanley's just caught off guard there by the beast that Keita finds him. And if five of these rifles can stay alive, already two of them have dropped. Ooh, this is the thing, CZ, so very scary in close range combat. Great work of this communication here as they play together. Nilzinho and Pulse have single-handedly <laughs> defended the site. They just played together, used communications, held their crossfires with two CZs, peaked at the right times, and somehow Fish 1-3 peaking one by one just got dismantled.
after Keita finds that kill onto Stanley, right, Stanley's looking God knows where, right, gets caught off guard, falls, and I'm thinking, right, that's it, two players dead on the CT yeah. side, the round's over. Somehow, from a three versus five, it turns to a zero versus five, or somehow, some way, FM do find that one. They completely stomp the momentum that F that Fish123 had. Saying that, though, T-Sec will find the first headshot to fry one and slow this round right down because already Fish123 have the advantage. They're going to group back towards A, potentially. But you can see how things get a bit muddled up on the FM CT side. Weak mid. Webber's going to have to spot towards mid and towards connector. And you can see as well, Pulse playing so passive towards CT. Slow stuff. A little bit of a lull across the battlefield as they just wait. No one wants to make that first mistake as they hold these angles. You can see the decision is made as well. Fish 23 is now starting to back off as they grab the bomb. Scurry their way towards that B bomb site, it seems. Does indeed. Gonna go for the contact play. Standing to spot one player. Doesn't spot the bomb. That's important. Good time, Smoke. Actually gonna play close. I actually don't think Fish123 are gonna expect this play. I like the plays made. He's been seen jumping. Low chance here he's spotted, but they can flash through this smoke if they want to. Smoke fades. Just tried to strike Keita, will take him down though. Tapping with that Tech 9 did a little bit of damage, but fortunately that's nowhere near going to be enough. Weber arrives on the scene first, has to wait for his teammates here, really though. He has no utility to play. They don't even have any flashes to get in. They do have that all important kit, so they can try and bide their time a little bit. The nade will roll out, trying to transfer anything they can do, trying to force the players off site with these Molotovs, but they realize it's not worth the risk. They need to back off and save this. Battle of the Force Buyers going into the second half here. Fish, they find the first pistol, rushing towards B. Instead, when they're forced by, they slow things down. They let Stanley make the mistake. And versus XL, Stanley kept getting caught off towards B apartments on Mirage. He kept playing too close. Mm. He kept playing on balcony and get, you know, giving away that first kill and giving away the opening to XL. And right now, he's doing the exact same for Fish123. They're killing Stanley, and that gives the opportunity to then take the site. It's fine, you know? If they lose a play in a trade, it's fine because. Stanley falls, it's a five versus four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've still got another player there. I think it's Neil Zinu towards B. If he dies, or if he, if he gets one kill and gets traded, it's still a four versus three. They have the B bomb site, they have the utility to hold it off. FM in that three versus four, they need to go for that save, and they do indeed. With the save, they will have a good buy. Four rifles, an AK, on pulse, and fry one saved, and then Weber with the UMP. Problem is though, Weber is that mid player. Gonna have to try and utilize that UMP towards connector. Or maybe if Robin jumps up, actually, might be able to catch him off guard. It's going to be interesting to see how this actually plays out. You can see Robin as well, just waiting out. Wanted to see if they are going to go for that boost. Pulse. You really smoking out towards Connected there as he went for the peak, just trying to get this information. This is slow stuff from Fish. Now, this is where they start to have the upper hand in these situations as well. You can see FM. You start aggressive style of play. They start to second guess themselves. They don't really know what Fish are going to go for. Exactly that. Going to go towards T spawn now and go for that contact ramp play. You do have Keita towards Palace. He can be your man of entry. If he goes first, oh, I mentioned before in the preface, before this game, Robin towards Connector. He hides here. He waits patiently. And he's waiting for that moment, that moment to be the thorn in the backside of, of FM CT side defense. Stanley, I mentioned, maybe playing a bit too aggress aggressive towards Balcony. This time the aggression plays off as they know it's going to be an A hit. Yeah, that's huge. He needed to get that information. You can see the rotate coming out from the CTs. This will aid them so heavily into the round. There will be an initial trade though. Slicky goes down. Fry will get traded out off the back of it from T-Sack. Four versus four as the push starts to unfold. Pulse only on 13 HP. Just wanted to try and hold this angle. Was hoping someone might push into CT. Has the back off of Nilzinho now, but they can't do anything. They're zoned out. They have to wait for their teammates. Stanley in the rear with the gear. Shuts down T-Sack as he's caught fumbling. Tags bait from as well. Keita is trying to ward them off, but it won't matter as Nilzinho has the high ground. Will strike down key. This slips in towards the bomb site. Bait from as well. Caught off guard. It all falls to pieces. It's on Robin. He has that UMP. They aren't aware of his positioning. Stanley actually is aware. Oh, through the smoke somehow. Robin takes one down. Gets a second as well. It won't matter though as Nilzinho can find the defuse, but Robin. Oh my How is he getting all these smoke kills? That got a bit scary then. Bomb was planted for him, but unfortunately for him, all of his teammates did fall in that retake. FM. They go, for, they go one for one. It's a four versus four, but you see how they play the retake. They don't give away any initial kills. They have the utility, they know in their heads, we've got the nades, we can still win this. Stanley as well on the flank, finds that first kill onto T-Sack. As soon as T-Sack falls, Stanley behind all those players, found that second kill, and then from there the round just breaks down in favor of FM. Talking about breaking down this round, we're gonna be seeing three Deagles on the T-Side. I make that two because already T-Sack's down, and Robin, four HP with the only rifle in hand. 
this is the thing. It's going to be so hard for him to really achieve anything into this. And he has to be that opener. He kind of needs to get the entry for his side to allow him to do anything into this one. It's going to be so hard. Nice little angle here as he peeks up, just looking towards Van, trying to see if he can spot anyone out. Flash comes in. Hasn't seen anything. They haven't seen the bomb as well towards B-Apps. You can see already three players close towards the A-bomb site, and Pulse will find Sliggy. Ideally, Sliggy pushes Palace, finds a kill, and that will cause a rotation from the B-bomb site. But the fact he hasn't found anything means that nothing changes for the CT side setup. Pulse, though, gets shot in the back by player, by Batham. And now this is where things get tricky. Look at this aggression here, though, from Stanley as he slips his way in. He's playing up close and personal, but this time around it's different. Obviously, he has the backup of Nilzinho. They're actually playing a little bit more together, so if they do go for that initial push to take him down, he can help them out. Warden those players off. He should have got a bit of information off the back of their footsteps as well. And then knowing they are going to rotate towards that A-bomb site. Yep, mid is given up. They can go for a boost window if they do desire it. And they do. Robin boosted in towards window. Neil Zunia backing off towards CT. Going to head back towards B. 2-2 two -two setup now. They know mid is weak. You can see Fry 1 not facing anywhere towards connector. And Weber now, the M4, going to face towards stairs. They spot them. Yeah, he's called them off. Can they actually pick them down? He has the back of his teammate as well in Fry. They have to work together here. Fry goes for the aggressive play, uses his initiative fantastically. A 2k on the board. Robin will find one, but with nine seconds left on the clock, no way in hell can he grab that bomb and do anything. Has to fall back, forced to scurry away, and just try and stay alive with the AK. As he clutches it, shaking, panicking, waiting for the onslaughting FM players. But he will get away with his life into this round. So unfortunate there for Robin. I mentioned before, his role on the T side is he's one place, team is on the other side of the map and sometimes if you play that player, if you play that role, sorry, you're just not going to find anyone. Yeah. You can't always get those openings. You can't always find those opportunities. Still, he does have the AK still and now he has 100 HP. How is he going to use that to his favor? Still though, three AKs bought on the T side, two Tech 9s, strong utility as well. They can take control of mid, they can go for a fast set play towards connector, if so be it. Instead though, they're going to hold out and wait for the smoke to fade towards ramp, and from there, the contact play potentially Sliggy again with the AK towards Palace this time. You saw as soon as he fell, the round fell apart as well. He had to find that kill towards the A-bomb site. Can he do it this time? This could actually work out quite well as well. Weber here, rotating back towards CT, has that open hand. Very organic Warper in terms of his style of play. He really could be the fawn on their side in terms of this. Needs to get that opening frag, at least get the information. He spotted them out now. Pulse will go big as he peeks his way up. Unfortunately, the trade comes in. Weber lands the shot off on towards Sliggy. It's looking good so far as they take the advantage of the battle of attrition. Fry as well somehow stay alive. Actually uses his confidence to charge it and takes down Robin. It falls on T-Sack. He was supposed to be that pin to play. Find his way late round through connector, but he can't find anything now. Problem was the CTs, they played it right. They know there's a player in mid. They're not just going to completely ignore him. Instead, they just molly him off, they smoke him off, he's held back, he can't have an impact to the round. And if the bomb went down and FM were playing retake, I'm sure they would have just gone back mid, killed him, and then retaken again. Yeah. So, either way, as soon as T-Sec spotted and they know what the game plan is, FM, they're not going to let those sloppy mistakes fall through. They're going to pull this one and bring it to 15-6. I mean, comparing this, com comparing this to what I saw versus Imperial... It's very different, right? Imperial, they were making those slight mistakes. They mm -hmm. were allowing Robin to get connector for free. They were allowing these players to get these backstabs in somehow. But FM, they're not going to make the simple, finite detail mistakes like that. They're not going to allow the Fish123 players to have that freedom, that movement around the map to cause all these issues on their CT side. Instead, we're going to be seeing 15-6. And uh, right now, Jackie, I'm not seeing too much of... Uh, too much of a chance of a backup coming from, or sorry, a comeback from Fish123. No, I mean, you know, really, the only rounds they've ever actually won in this are off the back of those pistol rounds and a couple of rounds where they've just thrown a spanner into the works, gone for something wild, just some aggression. That's it. They've won two pistol rounds. Yeah. They've only got six rounds. That's mental. That's what I mean. You, you know, the fact that you also got traded back off the second of that and the rounds they lost, they they never should have. FM had no stake in that. Exactly. The double CZ win was just outrageous. Stanley, warp in his hands, wants to try and find the initial frag. A little bit of a whiff comes out the apple crumble on the spray as Warren just snaps him down, Pops is on the bomb site, ripping through everyone, raining supreme as he just slams down a 3k on the board, wanted to try and connect it, take down Sliggy, the final member of the side, but Weber will just wait for him to peek out, does spot him, unfortunately can't quite punish him just yet, waiting for his teammate now, the bomb is in a bit of an awkward location, Sliggy can grab it, but this is going to be a very awkward round, you would imagine this is where FM can try and close the chapter. Sliggy. 19 HP, bomb is down, has no nades. This is the problem, he's so scared of the kitchen, right? Picks up the bomb, but as he crosses, actually instead gonna go back towards short. 
I think he's anticipating these players to be playing isolated, not together, which they are. Ooh. This means he might be able to catch a playoff guard, but no. Instead, Fry1 on the ball will find that kill onto Sliggy. 16-6 is the scoreline.